Which now brings us to chapter three. Nebuchadnezzar, he, he sets up uh, <laughs> he sets up this huge idol. It's the height in verse one says it's three score cubits, that's 60 cubits, what, roughly 90 feet high, and the breadth thereof was six cubits, roughly nine feet wide. This is this is huge. And this is what often leaders will do. They'll get into power and they want to establish some kind of enduring physical monument where their memory can be be retained. And if we look back to the story of the Tower of Babel in Genesis 11, a bunch of unnamed people get together and say, let us make our name great. So let's build this big tower. In the very next chapter, you have one man that God singles out. His name is Abraham. And God goes to him and says, I, the Lord God, will make you great. I will make your name great and your descendants great. And you get the same thing going on. Like, the, the role of leadership is not to aggrandize yourself, to not collect all the resources and to build some monument to yourself so people can glorify you. It's to serve and help. You think about King Benjamin. Was he building monuments to himself? He was out in the fields working. And what is this king doing here? He's having the people work. He's like King Noah. He's sitting around on his throne, letting everybody work, taking all the taxes and building monuments to say, look how awesome I am. It's like, no, the people are awesome because they're working hard. So this is a very common thing, and it makes me think, what kind of leader do I aspire to be, and what kind of leaders do I support? Do I support leaders that aggrandize themselves? Do I seek to aggrandize myself, or do I seek to be like King Benjamin or to be like Jesus, where my role is to always serve and uplift others and help them to become great so that God is great? Yeah. And by the way, back to this learner focus here, the question might be for you and me, what is the, this huge 90-foot high idol today made out of gold that we're commanded by the king to bow down and worship whenever the music plays? Because chances are very slim that any of you have this exact scenario playing out in your, in your part of the world. But to be sure, there are idols that this world offers and, and at times demands that we pay homage to or obeisance to or pay money for. Um, and so as, as we continue through this chapter, just be asking yourself, how is this part of our story today? So you'll notice Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in this chapter, this is, this is their chapter to shine. When the music plays, they refuse to bow down while everybody else is bowing down. It's pretty obvious. So they get called on it, and they get brought in before the king and questioned and told, if you don't bow down, you will be thrown into a fiery furnace. And notice their response in verse 17 and 18. If it be so, if you actually throw us into a fiery furnace, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. So who's the most powerful, right? The hand is a symbol of power, and the king of Babylon, who believes himself to be a god, who believes he has all power control, these servants, they truly are not the servant of the king of Babylon. They serve the king of heaven. It's beautiful. And then verse 18, the first three words of verse 18 are some of the, the best words I know in all of Scripture to, to describe faith but if not. Many years ago, Elder Dennis E. Simmons gave a, a talk in General Conference called But If Not, and in here he's, he's talking about this exact scenario. Listen to what he said. Faith is believing that although we do not understand all things, he does. Faith is knowing that although our power is limited, his is not. Faith in Jesus Christ consists of complete reliance on him, not in the arm of flesh, not in the wisdom of the world, but complete reliance on him. And then he goes on to say, the Lord has given us agency, the right and the responsibility to decide. He tests us by allowing us to be challenged. This is, this is very clearly <clears throat> a challenging situation for their faith. Their faith is being tried and tested here. 
He assures us that he will not suffer us to be tempted beyond our ability to withstand, but we must understand that great challenges make great men and women. We don't seek tribulation, but if we respond in faith, the Lord strengthen, strengthens us. The but-if-nots can become remarkable blessings. So notice their, their but-if-not. They, they in, in verse 17, they gave their assurance, God is able to deliver us, and he will deliver us, but if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Don't you love the fact that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are not putting the test on God? They're keeping the test on them. They're not saying, we'll trust God, we'll have faith in God as long as he delivers us from physical death, as long as I get that job, as long as I, I get goal X, Y, Z, whatever it may be, but if he doesn't give it to me, then I'm not going to trust him and I'm not going to rely on him. That's putting the test on him. I love Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's example of saying, look, God's not the one on trial here, it's me, and I am going to put my full and complete trust in him at all times and in all conditions that I may be in, even unto death, I'm going to stand as a witness of him that God is good. He hears and answers every prayer. He may not answer them the way that I wanted, but he hears and answers every prayer, and, and you get this, this principle played out. And then Elder Simmons, later on in this talk, many of you will remember, listen to this sequence our God will deliver us from ridicule and persecution, but if not, our God will deliver us from sickness and disease, but if not, he will deliver us from loneliness, depression, or fear, but if not, our God will deliver us from threats, accusations, and insecurity, but if not, he will deliver us from death and or impairment of loved ones, but if not, we will trust the Lord. So, brothers and sisters, as you, as you once again face your own King Nebuchadnezzar, your own worldly decrees and demands, and your own tests and trials of faith, oh, our hope and our prayer for all of us is that we won't have our discipleship and our love and our faith and our trust in God be conditioned on an outcome that we have, have determined but that we go into those tests and trials with the outcome already in place of complete trust that God is in charge, he has all power, he has all knowledge, and he will do all things for our good, and even if things don't turn out the way we had anticipated or desired, doesn't mean that we should then not trust God, it means that we should put even greater faith in him moving forward and greater reliance on him and on his power and his love and his knowledge.